Now we've talked about the ribs, the bones themselves being moldable. What I think a lot of people don't realize, and you can actually see quite well in this model, is that the ribs don't connect all the way to the breastbone or the sternum. They're actually connected to these cartilaginous structures, which then connect into the breastbone. This serves to give more flexibility and more of a sense of, yeah, flexibility and movement is why I think it's there. So you'll see that at the top, these are very short pieces and then they get a little bit longer as we go down in the ribs. Now there's 12 ribs and what you might notice is that at around the seventh rib, the cartilage actually combines. So like rib eight, nine, 10, all of them have a th they each have a cartilage piece, but then it all molds into one and joins the seventh rib cartilage. And then we have the two ribs in back, which are called the floating ribs. The 12th rib will be quite short and the 11th is about half or so the size of the others. So those ones are called floating because they actually don't connect to the center breastbone piece. So we'll try two things here. So the first is to come with a new awareness, touching just outside of the sternum, the breastbone, thinking, okay, so if I touch out on the sides of my rib cage, that's bone. But if I touch just to the outside of the breastbone, that's actually cartilage. So these pieces down here, that you might feel protruding a little, it's cartilage. And then as you keep going out, ah yes, now it turns into bone. And it's kind of hard to tell the difference. So you might see if you can feel more or less where you think that joint is, that little synthesis, okay? So try the images of a moldable rib cage, but now think, okay, well, the front, the whole front connection is actually cartilage, so it's actually even more moldable, right? So think now, okay, my front around my breastbone and my heart can really give and flex and flow, and then the bones themselves can turn and twist and torque, and they can bend. And so the whole thing is creating this system that in its ide ideal state allows for easy movement, easy breathing, and an effortless balance. Hmm. Okay, so touching your breastbone just between your collarbones down to the bottom, we'll look at this in more detail in a moment, but that's your breastbone, your sternum, and go ahead and think now, this is an image that is from, I believe it was Dynamic Alignment by Eric Franklin, and he says to think about the ribs coming in, and I think about them almost as fingers, as though fingers were holding up something, um, something just very gently and lightly, right? So they're coming in, they're holding it up, they're touching it onto the breastbone. And now imagine that as though all this were sort of free floating. So we did those images with the vertebrae where all the vertebrae were kind of free floating and we weren't imaging any connections. So now I'm, I'm imaging connections, but there's that lightness, that sense of almost sense of release in the connection to the sternum. So I can imagine all the flexible molding, the joints in back, but then this like, little bit of release and sometimes maybe I press a little bit too hard on one side and it sort of moves it in a certain way or maybe takes it a little off balance and I'm looking to see how can I align the breastbone between the very subtle and light balance of the ribs. So I'm imagining now that the breastbone is this sort of floating dagger, it actually kind of looks like a dagger. and it's being held up by the ribs. And see what it takes to find a balance in your body. 
So now we're imaging the rib cage all the way from back, coming out around and holding up the breastbone. Tends to give me a very different feeling of my breathing. If you enjoyed this video, sign up for the Embody Space newsletter and share the link with a friend. You can also find original content on Facebook and Instagram.